Hi everyone, Hello. welcome back to our channel. We are Jason and Chrissy, and uh, that's Lucy, one of our soul dogs. She's great. Wanted to say hi. Okay. Well, she's on the screen, so you she gotta is. introduce her. You gotta too. introduce her. Yeah. Um, and so today uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about uh, noises, and we've had a lot of experiences with these recently. Uh, and so I wanted to try give our experience with them, specifically me. I think it affects a little bit more than Jay, but um, like loud noises from electrical loud noises appliances. Like what? So like, <laughs> so like, do you remember when we went to the city? We went to Dupont Circle and had lunch, and we were looking for somewhere to eat, and we went into this place, and there was like a coffee grinder or something going on in the background. Coffee grinder, yeah. And yeah. we we sat down to eat. Blender. It was the blender, and yeah. like it was, I thought a chainsaw was going off in the kitchen, and I was like, yeah. "What is that noise?" And Jay's like, "I don't know. It's a blender," and it kept going, and I couldn't see the blender. I couldn't like put my eyes on the blender. It was just like this erroneous sound coming from behind the wall <laughs> and I was like I can't I can't I can't eat here and I literally walk, got up and walked out and we were already kind of hangry so that ended up not well, well but like uh I, I I realize now that the reason those sounds I you know learning about autism the reason those sounds are so like they're painful for me and they're not painful for me in regards to my ears hurt they're painful for me in like a particular part of my brain. It, it really gets, it's painful and I can't like uh, stand it for very long. Another example was our uh, fire alarm in our home went off uh, recently and like I lost all ability to do anything because it was so loud and it would not go off. We couldn't figure out the code <laughs> to turn it off. So it kept going off. And it was very like, cause we both kind of, I think at that point, our brains both kind of shut down and we we're having a really difficult time, like responding, even though most of the time I would say Jason and I are pretty uh, good at responding in emergency situations. Uh, but this one was like, cause it was in our home. It was like a safe place and we were, you know, relaxed and weren't on guard. It really like struck us both pretty quickly. And it took us a minute to handle that. So that's an example. Another example for me is the blender. When Jason's in the kitchen using the blender, uh, it's very loud and it uh, irritates me. And so I have to like either go in another room or just sit and, you know, wait until that's over. But those are some examples for me of like really loud noises that it just affects us differently. And a lot of times uh, I just need time and space in a quiet room or a quiet space to re, re like set. So I can move on. For example, when we left that restaurant, I had to sit on a park bench for a minute and just like breathe so I could like get back to daily duties. What does it do? What do you notice that like those types of noises do to you that I guess, how do they affect you? And what, like, like they don't hurt my ears. Like the, it's not my ears that are like, like your equilibrium. That gets yeah. Hurt? It's like something along, it's something within my brain that it like really affects my ability to respond and and be peaceful, like it hurts. And so like, I have to like, you know, kind of quickly remove myself from those situations. Um, but like, you know, you were kind of frustrated because it wasn't like that big of a deal. I'm used to stuff like that. Like, yeah. um, you know, like working in a kitchen is just like, a, just a constant war zone. So you just, I get maybe I'm just like uh, desensitized to that kind of stuff, you know, like, um, I've, I've been around a lot of loud noises like that and a con mm -hmm. consistent basis. And so it doesn't have that effect on me. You know, I, I just like function in it. So it's interesting though, uh, how, you know, uh, it does what, it, how you respond to it versus, and then yeah. do you, there were other people in the, uh, and there, there were, it was like midday. So yeah. There were other people in the restaurant that like were completely unfazed. Completely oblivious. <laughs> uh, and it blew my mind. It. And <laughs> um, I, I assume that like neurotypical people can just like block something like that out. Or, yeah. I even asked him, I'm like, does no one else hear this? Because like no one else was like responding to it the way that I was. Everyone else seemed to be fine with it. And I just 
it was too much for me. So I had, I had to leave and we had sat down, got, got seated, got waters, mm-hmm. had our menus. We hadn't yet ordered, I don't think, but I just like, well, I walked out, I couldn't, couldn't do it. So yeah, I think like hair dryers as well. Like, um, I, I don't routinely blow dry my hair because I just don't enjoy that wave sound coming from the hair dryer. I will once in a while or I'll get in, in grooves where I'm doing it, but predominantly I don't dry my hair because it's just unpleasant. Hmm. Yeah. So just things to uh, be conscious of, I guess. Cool. I didn't know that. That was news for me that like that it's really electrical current, something with electrical appliances that cause um, us to feel uncomfortable and sometimes if it's too loud, painful. Mm, so it's, you have like, you have a sensitivity to to something we got we want to like bring this home right so like yeah you have a sensitivity to something and um it's that stimul over stimulation thing we were reading about where like uh information if you have a lot of information coming at you at once like it has to be looked at like single file and Correct. and if there's too much at once then it's it's an over you get over overstimulated right especially if you don't know where it's coming from you can't see it and like so it it has to do with like having to um comprehend or mm-hmm. uh, analyze what comes in like when you're autistic everything comes in and is looked at individually everything in a room is observed and looked at individually everything that you ever do is looked at individually like Every, right. everything it's kind of like a if you could imagine like a spy walking into a social situation and being like okay this person has like a three button suit with like and that like every detail yeah. is kind of uh mapped out like, there's five doors you notice, you, there's it's not eight chandeliers you yeah, know what i mean like you yeah. you notice a lot and you kind of assess each thing and kind of go through the progression of understanding what what you're what you're seeing and if everything's jiving in the in the room whereas like uh from what we've read like neurotypical people just walk in they're like hey you know and like all that stuff is not to make them sound like uh, you know uh brain dead totally or anything like that like, uh, their yeah. their brain like automatically just processes like all processes that. something and, yeah and it's Oh, a great way to look at this particular component since I find it very interesting. There was this analogy in this book. I'm just going to hold up the book because I think it's appropriate. I think it's from this book. It's called New Ways of Understanding Autism. And this is what it looks like. And it is uh, by Bridget Harrison, uh, Lee St. Charles with Kim Too. I'm really killing those names, but there you go. You can check that out. Um, But like something they say to kind of give a comparison is that... um, having a autistic mind is like driving a manual car and having a non-autistic or neurotypical mind is like driving an automatic car. So it automatically goes into gear. It switches gears automatically. You don't really have to think about it, but when you're uh, autistic, you're having to do all of that manually every single time there's a thought. Mm-hmm. So some it's, it's a little more complex. In addition, in other areas though, we're very much, streamlined and and have things and we pick up on things very quickly just in these social settings specifically and in development it takes us a little bit more labor there's more labor involved which you know extends our energy and like requires us to um be cognizant of where we place our energy and direct it Mm -hmm. yeah good okay good here babe yeah it says we're done okay okay thank you all we'll see you next time bye